Not all the uh, soldiers interred in the graveyard here in Shorncliffe have been allowed to rest in peace. During the Second World War, a German fighter aircraft swooped down low of the trees behind us and for whatever reason opened it machine gun fire on the graves. This one took a hit here, here and most of the back here, but thankfully it's still standing. My name's Chris Shaw, I'm the chairman of the uh, Shorncliffe Redoubt Preservation Society. Uh, we're here at Shorncliffe today to do some reconnaissance of the First World War trenches which are at the bottom of Sandy Lane. Uh, these are going to be regenerated and rebuilt into uh, authentic trenches for education and reenactment purposes. And we're actually at a place where the modern British Army was really formed. In 1803 Sir John Moore arrived here with the 95th Rifles, the 43rd and 52nd and he formed the Light Brigade, the Light Infantry. On the uh, redoubt behind you is where he put into new formations, new tactics and a whole new ethos into the British Army where officers put their men first, where they were taught to think, read for themselves, uh, um, to be educated, which is really is a forerunner to the modern British Army. And they're immortalised, if that's the right word, on TV, aren't they? Sharps rifles. Sharps have been, uh, with by Bernard Cornwell, really did bring it to Napoleonic history and um, the 95th Rifles to the fore. And Bernard Cornwell is involved with this project and supports it. Um, we ourselves also are involved with the, uh, some of the filming of Sharps Rifles. Uh, some of the members of our group have been on set and do advise. And one of the uh, main technical advisors to Sharp is involved in this project. So he's here to help educate and uh, build what we're going to do. And this graveyard we're in, it's again a microcosm of the history of the British Army, isn't it? The graveyard is, is phenomenal. It's been here 200 years and really charts Shorncliffe's story. At the bottom we have graves from Napoleonic soldiers. As you move up the hill you then have members of the Chinese uh, Engineers Corps. You, then you've got um, soldiers from Canada, sailors from um, around the world. You've got Belgium flyers, you've got people from the RAF, even the grave behind us. He is a young man who died in infancy and he is the son of a sergeant major. And so you've got a real family history as well as sort of soldier history here. And it's been brought tragically up to date very recently, hasn't it? Even up to back in January, we had uh, one of the Gurkha rifles buried here. So over 200 years, riflemen keep coming back to Shorncliffe. This is their home, this is their birthplace. Um, the brief of today is we are here to record the First World War trenches that were built in uh, around about, 18, about 1915. They're at the bottom of Sandy Lane. This is Shorncliffe. This is the start of the British Light Infantry here. Everything that was done in 1803 with more, the 95th Rifle, 52nd, 43rd, Everything was started here. It changed the whole nature of the, of the British Army forever. And that was then born through the years to obviously the First World War, which in a, in a, in a way went back where people started fighting in line again, advancing into machine gun fire. So ridiculous. When Moore had completely revolutionized it, it, it turned the clock backwards. You will see from your brief that you've been given here, this photograph was taken down Sandy Lane. This is a photograph of soldiers from, we believe, the Canadians walking down here to dig out and build. This one here. So hopefully we'll be able to reenact that later of us like, all marching down, you know, 90 odd years later doing the same thing. And it's the reason we're doing it is because these guys went through and as you look in the cemetery a lot of them came back to Shorncliffe never to return home. This is why we want to uh, mark the graves, uh, mark the, uh, uh, the trenches, why we want to rebuild and regenerate them. Obviously a lot of it is for education, a lot of it is also for the reenactors to use. To actually bring school children down here and put them through a proper trench system with proper reenactors showing them how it's done put them in a, in a bit of uniform and say this is how you'd go through. You'll see today that the training trenches, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, the, sort of the, the infrastructure still there. We just need to rebuild it. We do that, um, it's amazing. It'd be fantastic for education. Just to let you know for schools wise, 
Within our catchment area, we have 600 schools. That's secondary schools who cover this period. Within that, there are 800,000 children, or students, I should say, who could use Shorncliffe. It would be the only working trench system in the country. Staffed, you know, looking proper, really working. And that is something that what you're doing today is going to help to achieve. So we still have to get the land off the defence estates. We've still got to sort of deal with civil servants and paper pushers, but I believe we will succeed. You know, your support and, and the hard work you're going to put in today, how can they stop us? Really, how can they stop us? And they shouldn't. This, this belongs to the country. The, unfortunately, that they, the powers that be don't think it's that important because the one they haven't got money and haven't got the interest, but I believe it is. And again, it'd be fantastic. The nice thing about it is it is half an hour away from France. It's for regeneration of the local community, for jobs, for all the right reasons is why we're here today, why we're going to be doing what we're doing. Well, my name's David Kenyon. I'm a battlefield archaeologist and an expert in surviving First World War trenches. I've done a lot of work on trenches like this over in France. But what we have here is what they call a practice trench. It's a trench that would have been constructed during the First World War so that soldiers who were on their way to the Western Front could come here and train and learn all the skills they needed for when they got over into the real trenches. And all the land behind me, for stretching back for maybe three or four hundred metres that way, is an enormous system of areas like this. There's trench, frontline trenches, communication trenches, dugouts, all the different types of feature that the soldiers would meet in France. How long has this been left in this sort of derelict state then? When will the last person have been down here? Probably the last time this was used for its original purpose would have been in 1918 as the war was ending. Almost as soon as the war ended it would have been abandoned because there was no use for it anymore. And by the time the Second World War began the fight, style of fighting had changed and so people didn't really need trench systems like this. So the likelihood is this has just sat here for 90 years since the last uh, soldier climbed out and got on a ferry to go to France to fight the First World War. It's just been left, as you see it, these trees have grown up. That tree's taken 90 years to grow just in the side of the trench there and nothing's happened to it. But you plan to uh, help to bring it back into a condition where visitors can understand what went on here? What we aim to do here is to bring these trenches back to the public, to clear them out, to investigate them archaeologically and record them because they're an important piece of our heritage. They're uh, they're the, the hill forts of the 20th century, if you like. They're earthworks created by soldiers uh, during a very important part of our history, the First World War. So the aim is to clear them out so that people can come and see them, and school groups in particular can come in and get a real sense, not just from a book, but a sense they could literally touch a trench and get a sense of what the First World War was all about and what it meant for this community here as well as what was going on in France. So really, we're in a place that's been untouched for the best part of a century. Very much so, yes. It's a... It's a little untouched sort of time capsule of First World War history uh, that's recently, it's been here all that time but this is the first time anyone's paid any attention to it for 90 years.